Welcome everybody. It's my big pleasure to welcome you to our second concert live at the Harp Channel. I'm so happy that we have many people who were interested to apply for these concerts because I think it's a great opportunity to share your art. And we have today second artist after Alexander Bordashev. We have a very wonderful harpist from Ukraine, Veronika Lemyshenko, who will not only speak who will not only speak about herself and about her activities and all her plans and what she is doing which is really very interesting but she will also of course perform because it's a concert and i would like to very much uh, ask you if you have any questions to be with us in contact because she's a really very good harpist i will tell you about her a little bit because she will of course speak more afterwards but she's a principal harpist of the Ural Philharmonic, and she's a teacher at Ural uh, Musical College in Yekaterinburg in Russia. She's art director of Glowing Harp Competition in Ukraine, and recent, recently she was appointed as a member of the board of directors of the World Harp Congress. And of course, she is a soloist as well. So combined all of her professions and all, all, all of her activities is really great. And I am very happy that in her age, which is very young, she's able to combine all of that, what she is doing. So I'm sure you can be really looking forward for today meeting with our artist. Veronika Lemyshenko from Ukraine. So I would like to welcome her and she will greet you with the music right away. The first piece will be Augustin Deran, the Vals number one. <laughs> Thank you. 
It's wonderful to have you today at our interview concert. And of course, thank you very much for your beautiful entrance of your performance. So, Veronica, how are you in these days? Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you, Jana, very much for inviting me. I'm fine uh, doing a lot of things. So I can say I'm really suffering from the isolation till now. <laughs> Hope it will end soon. Of course, I am sure that because you are very active also on the online thing so that you can also speak a little bit about it because you were there were some events which you were uh, arranging and organizing, but they have been unfortunately cancelled as many things. So it was also your your activity in the glowing harp, which I have been saying at the very beginning, this festival was cancelled, but you have arranged some kind of very big event on online as well with so many harpists. Tell me a little bit about it. Yes, I was really happy and lucky to have a support, a big support from harpists from everywhere. And so the idea was uh, at first to make a concert of uh, people who used to participate in the Glowing Harp Festival. But after I thought, why we should be so <laughs> small if everyone can connect? It's really easy with the internet we have. So we decided to make it make it bigger. And to also through this event to, to support all the medical staff and the delivery staff and doctors and everyone who is working every day for make the situation better. So the name was the Glowing Harp Marathon, and uh, I'm really thankful to harpists who support this idea from the very beginning when we only did the commercial and announcement. So it's Isabel Moretti. Thank you very much and Anais Godemar, and a lot, a lot of beautiful harpists, Len Kapitovic. So we have really great beginning. And uh, thanks to that, I think uh, that's why we had so much people. It's over than 130 harpists from all over the world who participate in this marathon. And I didn't expect it. It was uh, almost 10 hours live. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen some of the advertisements, of course, and I have seen some of the videos and I was really impressed how many people were applying because I have seen that you have made some schedule as well and you were even telling when, who is performing. So it has been really difficult also to, to manage to make the yeah, schedule. Well, especially with the time zones. So we start in the Australia and then Hong Kong, uh, Tokyo and move to the Europe. And the last one was uh, mm -hmm. South America, USA, Canada. And the last one was... Uh, Harpist from Hawaii. <laughs> That's wonderful. And how many days was this this going on? It was one day, ten hours sleep. So we start and wow. ten hours in a row. We just wow. connect, and connect. We should uh, interrupt each hour because we streamed in Instagram, and there is a policy of Instagram that live stream is limited. But it will be even easier with the schedule. So we have ten sets, of uh, one hour each. Of course, that's wonderful. And are you going to plan to to repeat it again with some kind of other projects? So. If you have so. already the experience, it's great to, to go on <laughs> with it. Yeah. So, and um, is it going to be because it has been cancelled the official uh, organization, but it is going to be postponed for the next year, or it has been totally cancelled and only uh, exchange of this online thing? Uh, is the thing is with Global Harp, we have competition and festival and. Mm -hmm. uh, we have for the next year competition, so it's uh, no sense to postpone the festival. So we will do the two festival after the competition. So competition will be every three years and between will be the festivals. Okay, that's very interesting. And how many participating harpists are at this festival or, or maybe the, the competition? Because it has been how many how many times was this competition already happening? Well, we started like local competition and we did it international since 2017 uh, with mm -hmm. uh, Salvi and 2019 with Kamak Harps. And so it will be the third one in 2021. Wonderful. And who was the 35 uh, participants each year. Mm -hmm. We have 
in four categories. So from the little, really little harpies, they have one one round on one stage, and mm -hmm. all the others have two stages. And uh, also in the second, in the final stage, they have an opportunity to, to play with the big orchestra. Wow, that's wonderful. And the repertoire is varied, or is it really required? Or everybody so, has a free choice? <laughs> We have something required, and something, of course, up to mm -hmm. participants. So there is a Ukrainian piece in each category, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the concerto for the final stage is required. So for the under 14 age is uh, Wagenseil, first part only, and age under 18 is Handel concerto, all. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. for the final, we have Glier, uh, first part, and uh, uh, Lark or Rossignol. So our competition in is uh, half a year before the Israel, so it's a great mm -hmm. opportunity. <laughs> That's wonderful because it's a very similar program, of course. That's yeah. really very, very good. So, and uh, how, who was the uh, the first prize winner of the last competition? It was... Um, I mean, from uh, the, the professional category, from the highest the category. professional category, we had a um, uh, recital with the orchestra in the next season, invited mm -hmm. as a soloist, and um, we have... Um, not for for any particular category, but for anyone, jury will decide a special prize is Celtic harp. Mm -hmm. uh, so when he's... And do you remember the name of the winner who, who was in the last competition, who was the winner of the professional category? Uh, we had actually split uh, two uh, second prizes with a girl from Japan, Hitomi Shimaru, and uh, Clara from Germany. Sorry, Clara, I forgot your surname. Your name. Okay, okay, wonderful. And the Celtic harp went to the little uh, girl. And, and actually, the prize for the orchestra also won, uh, as we didn't have the first prize in the senior category, so mm -hmm. the category mm -hmm. under 18, and the girl from Belgium, uh, she she won the opportunity to play with the orchestra in the next season. Wonderful. That's And it's the orchestra from Ukraine. Yes, from Kharkiv. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, Veronika, uh, before we will speak about other projects would you play for us another piece now yes i prepared a ukrainian piece it's a uh, vasil barinsky dumka which means contemplation wonderful Thank you. 
sure that many people are clapping as I am doing. <laughs> I'm doing, <laughs> but really, bravo again, wonderful, very, very interesting piece as well because it's not very usual played. Is it yeah. a composer of Ukraine, probably? Yes, and it's required. I'm not sure if it requires this year. Uh, no, but for the last year, it was one of the set pieces for the competition. And the idea of the competition, we put uh, Ukrainian music, not really too hard to play, so not not like a challenge for the harpist, but to, to show their musicality. And uh, also, if piece is nice and they are not dry and playing it, it's uh, more <laughs> possible that they will enter it uh, and they will play after the competition in their concert and everywhere. So it's oh, uh, as, as, as a repertoire piece that they will yeah, edit to their, to their repertoire. And also tell me, please, uh, the pieces which you are choosing for the competition, uh, are you uh, with the board of it or are you choosing it by yourself? Or how do you manage to, to do the program? I consulting with uh, my first teacher, Larissa Klipsova. Uh, mm -hmm. She is a professor at the school the competition is held in so i'm consulting with her she has much more experience and uh, after i also sent in the program to our general sponsor this time it's kamak harps so if everyone is okay with it that's yeah, wonderful no, no. how long is usually the program it's not only one piece in each of the round right it's no no it's uh for the small one so uh, we have even debut category for those who play the first year because mm -hmm. when kids are small, it's a really big difference, even if one, two year uh, difference in uh, studies the harp. So for mm -hmm. the really small one, it's separate category. And after mm -hmm. up to 11, it's uh, five, 10 minutes. After 14, it's uh, 10, 15. Uh, then up to 11, uh, 15, 20. And for the senior, it's 20, 25. So it's a lot of opportunity to choose whatever you like. Like we have basic. Uh, uh, like we need something baroque, something romantic, mm -hmm. and something contemporary, but not set. And the, is there any the contemporary pieces? Is that free choice, or is it uh, also that you have have some piece from Ukraine, which is so maybe have, directly for for the competition? Yes, for for the senior, we have uh, each time written a piece from mm -hmm. our good friend of our competition. It's Ukrainian composer Yevgen Andreev. Mm -hmm. So. He already wrote Ukrainian fantasy and souvenir, and we'll see what will be for the next year. And actually, for the festival, it should be his premiere of the harp duo. Uh, mm -hmm. It's called uh, Verkhovinka. It's uh, like Highland. It's a spirit of Carpathian mountains and rivers. But we will present it online, and I even have a cover ready. So I, yeah. I posted on Instagram a small expert from it, and I have a lot mm -hmm. of uh, references. All when I call the when where can I order this? That's one uh, no. on the on the left. Yes, like this it will be. Well, it's a little bit too too light. Maybe it's better when you will afterwards maybe post it as a photo to to this yes. this uh, comment afterwards. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. maybe if you will have any links for connecting not only the competition, but also the material, the any music or anything what, what you, it's connected to your festival, it would be really wonderful. Yes, and also I would like to say, we missed one more really important premiere by Paul Patterson. It's yes. a really new piece. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's part of the, it's concertino, canonic concertino for harp and flute. Okay. Uh, and uh, the first part of this is, is a two-part concertino. It's the first one is uh, his canonic lullaby, already written before, but adapted for the uh, string orchestra mm -hmm. as a component. And the second, it's uh, really I'm proud of. It's Ukrainian scherzo based on Ukrainian uh, folks melodies, mm -hmm. and it's dedicated uh, to me and to my friend flutist Alexandra Shukova. She is watching Sasha. <laughs> So uh, it's a pity we didn't play it this year, but I think mm -hmm. we will postpone it to the competition uh, opening or gala recital. We'll see. That would be wonderful. And is it with the big orchestra or is it chamber orchestra? Or chamber. It's a chamber, chamber orchestra. orchestra. Wonderful, really. It would be absolutely amazing to have again again another concerto for flute and harp. Yes. Because 
<laughs> not more certainly. People want to have that, and it's really wonderful that if there exists something, and you you can really present it as a really nice piece, as you can say already now. Maybe you, if you will play it, and some people will not be able to attend. Maybe if you can record it, if you will have the allowance uh, and the permission from the orchestra, that you can then put it on the yes, YouTube. Yes, we will for sure. Yes. It will be wonderful. Yeah. So, is there any other project which you unfortunately uh, were not able to do because of the of this epidemic? Now, <clears throat> is it something well, what you lost? The biggest one was uh, cancelled is the festival uh, mm -hmm. because there was a lot of guests, and we managed to put it online mostly. So we made this marathon as a performance part, and we made the master classes, which uh, has to be with uh, like. In, in Kharkiv with Zoraida Villa Pena and uh, Julia Christine Lukan, we did it uh, online. Mm -hmm. And of course, a few competitions where my student and me also wanted to go was cancelled. So, and World Hub Congress, the big regret, of course, because I was really looking forward to it. But next of year. Of course, at least when the, the these events were able to be postponed, it's at least some kind of hope that it it will happen. But of course, there are some 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 events which were not able to be even postponed, and they have been cancelled, which is really a big pity. But you are also performing as a principal harpist in the orchestra, so your orchestra was also not working certainly in these days, unfortunately. Yes, at first we did some uh, live stream. Uh, so mm -hmm. me and my colleague Maria Pesnikova, we did a harp duo recital mm -hmm. with uh -huh. an empty hall. Uh, streamed online and after it, it was successful and was also uh, on TV in a few weeks so mm -hmm. and like that and now we are just waiting when we can start yeah. that, so the orchestra is not not playing yet the orchestra is still yeah. playing yet, yeah and you are two harpists in the orchestra yes that's wonderful yeah because that's I wonderful. think that... otherwise it would be crazy it's impossible to do anything <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. it's really. I think that it's something what what should happen to, uh, in every orchestra, but I know that there's it's not so often now, unfortunately. It's but thanks to our conductor Dmitry Dmitry Lis, mm -hmm. he was really insist to have two harps. Thanks to him. Him. Yeah. <laughs> be lucky to have him like that. <laughs> and please tell me when uh, you will come to the congress next year. Are you going to perform there as well? Yes, I'm going to perform uh, Spiders, but with mm -hmm. the chamber orchestra. And it was an uh, interesting story because I first uh, attended the World Hub Congress in Hong Kong in 2017. Mm -hmm. And uh, at first I wanted to come just to listen, but in the last, almost the last minute, I got an invitation from Chantal Mathieu mm -hmm. to play in, in her recital tribute to Damas, his uh, sonatina for harp duo. So, Chantal, thank you very much. <laughs> it was a yes, big no. honor and pleasure. And before we have Chantal is a jury in our competition, so that's how mm -hmm. it connects. And in, in the Molhapa Congress, I saw an um, advertisement for the Wales competition, uh, which should be next year, in 2018. And I checked my orchestra schedule, and I have three week, really in the, the same time. So I decided it's not happening often, so I need to go. <laughs> And the mandatory piece uh, was spiders. I never played mm -hmm. before, so I learned the spiders. And there I met Paul Patterson at the competition, and he liked my performance, and we kept in touch. And also, after competition, uh, so it was in April, and in July I was lucky to play a recital in uh, London Royal Academy, thanks to mm -hmm. Karen Vaughan and Paul Patterson. And mm -hmm. there I play few pieces with my flutist uh, Sasha Ushakova mm -hmm. and then Mr. Patterson decided to wrote this um, Ukrainian skirts and also he was uh, really generous and gave me the score of the spider web uh, because it's not published yet I think so after I come back from all this uh, to the next season I asked uh, conductor I, I was supposed to play Ginastera concerto Mm -hmm. And I asked him, Doctor, maybe we can switch it to the spider web. I was really interested to play it, and he was agreed. So I made a record of that concert and uh, sent it to the uh, World Heart Congress in various proposals and got mm -hmm. the invitation. So it was a big line from one congress to other. <laughs> That's unbelievable. This is fantastic, yeah. really. How uh, a lot of lucky coincidences, really. Yeah. 
No, this is how the things can happen and how they can be connect connected and how the life can go through many different ways. And it is really wonderful. So I'm so excited and so looking forward to hear it because it's really, I have not known that exists a, a company for the spiders because spiders by itself, it's a beautiful piece for the solo harp and with the orchestra is really, really amazing. So I'm yeah. very, and I'm sure that everybody is looking forward to hear that piece, yeah. Uh, Veronica, what are you having now for us as a concert, like another piece for us? I have Tsigani. At first, I have to say, I was really inspired how you did it. All the piece <laughs> playing on the heart, it was really, I was shocked. It's something, so now I feel a little bit, <laughs> you know, funny with the small cadence. <laughs> when you played all it, it was really great. And actually, we had uh, the violinist you play with, Joseph Spachik. Mm -hmm. He performed uh, with Ural Philharmonic, so I met him, and he was really excited about you. He, the first thing he said to me when he knew I'm the harpist, do you know Jana Bushkova? <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's wonderful, really wonderful violinist. He's really absolutely amazing. So it's wonderful that you could have had him already in your orchestra as a soloist. It's really wonderful. So we are looking forward now to hear your okay. your cigar by Maurice Travel and enjoy. And we are looking forward. Good luck. <laughs> Short, really. <laughs> <laughs> we all know what is it like, and of course, if you you have to play it like this immediately, really bravo, fantastic. Thank yeah. you. Because I had I played it twice, and the uh, first one was with a student orchestra, and the second one was actually with a school orchestra. So conductor had so many problems, so he was just okay. You do your stuff. You're an adult. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's really, really wonderful, and it's really great piece for for the harp. We all harpists know it, and it's really wonderful. Yeah, if and actually, it's a lot of after the cadenza. So the first shock is cadenza, and the second shock when you see. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Is there any any plan that you will play it now with the orchestra as well? Uh, not yet, but I'm always trying to keep it in my finger because each time I forget it, it's like I see it for the first time. I was what. How? <laughs> so it's better to replay it time after time, like all the cadenza we have, but Cigani especially, mm -hmm. it's really tricky. Absolutely. And are you, your orchestra is symphonic orchestra or do you yes. play also operas? Or? No, no, it's a no. symphonic, a philharmonic symphonic orchestra. Okay. Yeah, because we, I will not now say what you are going to play, but it's more like about the um, opera orchestras, even they are not operas, but it's from ballet, which you will now play uh, later on. But only that, uh, so do you play also these kind of pieces in your orchestra or? Yes, we have a lot of Tchaikovsky suite. Uh, mm -hmm. So I play in a tracker a thousand times, but I decided to not play it here because everybody <laughs> hear it <laughs> like a million times. So it's not nothing <laughs> really interesting. But for the Swan Lake, I think the interesting that there are two cadences, uh, the mm -hmm. original one, which Dulova performed, which is more popular, and the second one actually is really nice, and I will say a few words after I will play the first edition, and I say a few things about the second version. Okay, so do you want to play it now already? Yeah, I can. Why not? Okay, so let's, the Dulova's version first. Yeah, the Dulova's version first. Okay, super. Thank you. 
so this is a okay. It was the first uh, version of Bulova. The most popular, and uh, the second one it's uh, related to my teachers' uh, theme. So I had really great teachers. It's Milda Agazarian. Oh no, of course, and I'm eating. <laughs> She's watching. And uh, my first teacher, Larisa Klevtsova, Larisa mm -hmm. Valentina. So the first uh, thing I ever felt played on the harp, it was when I was really little, like three years mm -hmm. old, and my parents mm -hmm. uh, put me to the opera theater, and they expected me to listen maybe first act and after leave, but I was really sincere. It's my favorite ballet of so Swan Lake. It's my big love and my teacher from ukraine larisa klitsova she played this another version of uh, tsabel mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and uh, i really fall in love <laughs> so i think that was i think we are interested to hear what is the difference in that yes, because it's really oh, different. Oh, oh. The introduction is the same so you will hear it now. okay excellent and it's dedicated to larisa klitsova wonderful <laughs> It's a little bit different, but still we hear there what, what we need or we are used to here. Is it, and is it published or is it just only common in, yeah, in Russia? It's published. Uh, I don't know where exactly, but I have a printed score. And uh, sometimes I have uh, letters on Facebook from uh, European friends asking, oh, is there another one like a dancer? <laughs> Do I have it? I need to put another one. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be interested, uh, interesting for me to know because I know that the Russian harpists they have really uh, many versions of, of playing in the operas and actually it's not uh, it's like tradition so the people are just passing it from one to another one but there is nothing what is printed is there anyone who already put it into the music so that the this tradition of the Russian harpists of, of these main cadenzas is really um, like keep kept for the next generations i think so i think maybe it's not a uh, good stru structure yet but mm -hmm. there is it's existing and it's not like few scores somewhere in big secret maybe mm -hmm. it, it's need to go more public uh, printed in a good edition uh, in a one uh, a score i don't know it would be really nice because I know that in Barsho Theatre or in uh, in uh, Marinsky Theatre, they have their own versions, which it's really from one generation to another one. It's passing and uh, the the harpists know it. So they play it, but it's probably, I don't know, maybe it is really published or they have it in some music, but it seems like that they more played because they know it and it was... Yeah, really maybe maybe you're right. Maybe like this, because uh, mm -hmm. as I know, it's uh, this version, it's really not often perform yeah. anywhere except so um, maybe that's an idea to to put it together and make a collection of really traditional way of playing these main cadenzas of the russian uh, russian composers yeah so, it's a good idea and it, it's a good opportunity and a good uh, uh how to say a good idea to make a lot of uh, harpists playing in different orchestra in some common project because i uh, think it's to share it's really really important so hmm. it's not good when harpists like Oh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's Russian music, and so it's, of course, so national, so that the Russian harpists know, and if it was passing from one generation to another one, it was maybe already meant 
from the composer, maybe even Tchaikovsky wanted them to play the, like this, or they were working with the Tchaikovsky and it was just not put into the music. We don't know these kind of details. So it would be really yeah. nice if it can be. Thing I always said about Tchaikovsky, I love him a lot, but he wrote everything for the five fingers. <laughs> <laughs> there were artists who had six fingers on the song. They were using five of them. Who but knows? Still, I'm really grateful to him to have all these beautiful solos. So mm, absolutely. <laughs> Veronica, tell me because we have one more piece and I don't want you to play right away because we have so yeah, many we, we have really a lot of time. So I hope you don't mind that we will a little bit yes, sure. more. Sure. Just move it I can ask you if you can go a little bit to yes, because you are so much on the side, so that you will not be missing on the on the screen. Uh, Veronica, tell me, you are original from Ukraine, or did you move? Ukraine, to... yes. You were born in Ukraine. Yes, yes, yes. You were born. So, uh, and you started to play the harp when you were how old? Have you been? I was seven, so I'm really lucky. So I didn't need to switch from any instrument. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important. And well, I I started to have uh, lessons before school, like five years or something with piano. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know that there is a harp in 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 our school. So there is mm -hmm. a you know this is a system in uh, ex-Soviet countries uh, where we have few special musical school, like mm -hmm. four or five in a whole country. So in Ukraine we have in Kharkiv, in Kiev, in Lviv, and in Odessa. And with the harp, uh, I was lucky with, in the park, it was the best harp club. So we have musical Sorry. and uh, oh, I have the, but she's clicking now. <laughs> More lucky. <laughs> so we have all the musical, uh, like solfeggio, uh, musical theory, and everything. Plus, at the same building, we have like uh, literature and math and the biology, so everything in one. Yes, yeah, sure. I will just talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she just saw some cat outside, so that's why she was <laughs> getting crazy a little bit. <laughs> okay. Sorry for, for disturbing. So, yes, I was lucky to get to that school, and there was a hard class, uh, so I was entered. And at first, actually, our, how to say it? Um, one of shift managers of the school, uh, they mm -hmm. told me, oh, maybe you want to go to violin or something, look how it nice, why do you want to play the harp? And I told them, I don't like the sound of the violin, sorry. <laughs> I will play the harp. So, it was a really great memories from my first school, actually my only school, so I mean from mm -hmm. my first teacher. And after I entered the Milda Agazarian class in uh, Moscow, mm -hmm. and of course I reached so much from uh, one of the best world professors, Milda Gazarian, and I'm really, really grateful for that. Absolutely. And after I, I take a Baroque class with Mara Galassi, but it only one year, so it's mm -hmm. like head of the iceberg. <laughs> no, it's a wonderful gift if you start really with a good teacher, because you don't need to change anything, and it's really a big gift. So you you were you must be really happy for that and really thankful for for all yes, of that I, I know i'm really lucky with that so i mm. had really good teachers from the first chat and it's really fantastic <laughs> the best gift really you could have got and please tell me i did not because of the talk i don't know if you have said if your your parents are musicians as well or you were just coming to the to do the music because you really like to do it uh, my mother, she finished like secondary school, mm -hmm. uh, so she played piano for until uh, the eighth grade. But my parents like, like a melaman, so they love music a lot. And actually, they put me when I was really young to a lot of uh, like dances, uh, mm -hmm. uh, painting, uh, music, and everywhere I failed. <laughs> and everybody thought maybe try music. <laughs> 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 That's wonderful. So it was not that you were surrounded by the music because your parents would not like destiny or something. No, it really was a choice of my parents and me and everyone was uh, happy with it. So you started directly with the harp, no piano before? Only when I was five and six. So I learned mm -hmm. solfeggio and it's like, I um, have to say it, like prayer course before you enter the school. So you learn the really major stuff about music and after when you enter it. So that was the system in that time. Maybe now it's a little bit different. 
-hmm. But in that time, uh, we had that. And when I entered to the first grade, I had to choose the instrument I would like to play. And I chose the harp. Came to the harp. But because you said that you were studying in Moscow and you are from Ukraine and you were so little, how did you manage to... No, no, I studied after school. So I entered the Moscow Academy when I was already 18. Okay, so that's that's different, yeah, because of course, otherwise it would be very difficult to always travel over there and over, coming back, yeah. yeah. I had a travel experience because I got the job in orchestra when I was still doing my master degree, mm -hmm. and that was crazy because it's uh, two hours by plane, two and a half, and I had to fly a lot, so it was mm -hmm. like, <laughs> sometimes I didn't sleep. <laughs> Of course. So you were doing, you were already a member of the orchestra when you were still studying. Yes. So, yes. so when did you enter to the orchestra? What age, if I can ask? Because uh, you're so young, you can. Yes. Still. <laughs> no, I, I think I was 23, mm -hmm. 23, 24. 23, 24, something like that. <laughs> and may I ask you, because maybe it's interesting for the others, what is in your country required for the orchestra when you do auditions? Uh, it depends. Um, so, of course, some solo. Sometimes it's required solo, like Spor or Ravel, mm -hmm. or but uh, uh, sometimes it's just to do solo any anything you want and more mm -hmm. attention to the orchestra parts. Mm -hmm. And I think which is really important that a lot of orchestras they do the harp audition with the orchestra, the final. So really? it, it's really useful because you can play brilliantly. Uh, but maybe you can understand the conductor at first mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, the second maybe no one will hear you in the orchestra so it's really important things and it's it should be on the audition in the final i think really. that's great so you do it in ukraine yes in ukraine and when i entered to the yekaterinburg also i had the final with the orchestra mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also for the percussionists, actually, and for those who play for the principals. Oh, that's interesting because we have it only for the, I mean, concert masters, so that yeah, they are... for the principal. But I was playing for the principal, mm -hmm. so for the concert master of uh, yeah. harp group, big mm -hmm. huge harp group. <laughs> so what did you play for the audition? What was there required? Uh, if you was, uh, yeah, I remember it was uh, Symphony Fantastique. It was. Uh, mm -hmm. All cadences like uh, Swan Lake, Nutcracker, and Sleeping Beauty. It was uh, Glinka Hota Aragonese. Mm -hmm. It was Bartok Concerto and uh, ah, Rachmaninov. Rachmaninov Third Symphony. It's a big solo in the slow movement with the, well, with the corn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ravel Lavals. But I didn't play actually all of it. So somewhere in the middle, they stopped me. It's, okay. <laughs> <Fine>. <laughs> It's when they know that you are good enough, that's not necessary that you played everything. So really, congratulations that you have this position, of course, because you are a teacher as well. Is it at the yeah. same city so that you don't need to travel or do you need to travel for this? No, it, it's the same city. And uh, first year I didn't teach, so I need to adopt. First, I actually graduated finally mm -hmm. with my master. And after I started to teach and I really like it. I, I really love and it. Is it the same school as you were graduating? Uh, it's the same system. So there are, as I told you, it's a few mm -hmm. schools like this in all post-Soviet uh, countries. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. actually my school in Kharkiv and this school in Yekaterinburg where, where I teach now, they was uh, open in the same year. So I think it was uh, the one uh, order to open th those schools. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm lucky to teach in a special school where mm -hmm. harp is a major uh, lesson so I can practice <laughs> great wonderful so you are the only teacher at your school also with my colleague so it's not much harpist in Yekaterinburg. work mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard because when you need to live somewhere it's impossible to find somewhere who will play instead but in the point that i got the school position and a lot of gigs it's it's good so it mm -hmm. depends on the view mm -hmm. and how many students do you have at school I have six students from nine to twelve. Okay, so also the beginning. So you are very important for them for their life. Yes, I really enjoy to teach from the really beginning because after mm -hmm. it, it might be really hard when uh, it's already adult, almost mm -hmm. adult, like sixteen, seventeen, mm -hmm. with hands like this. It's uh, could be really 
of course it's possible if uh, the students are interested and in practice a lot it's everything possible but if you have an opportunity to start with the really beginning with a serious attention and when your parents are interested in that's really matters absolutely and what school you are using of course from your teacher you are following certain language yes like... of course uh, from milda gazarian and larissa klipsova all i remember uh, i'm trying mm -hmm. to uh, repeat and uh, i'm improving myself i attend the master classes i'm sitting sometimes in the milda gazarian's lessons and uh, larissa klipsova mm -hmm. and also a lot of as a teacher i can uh, attend i always use an opportunity because it's really important it's a lot of new things uh, coming every day hmm. so you need really to follow and how often uh, in your country because i know that it has been also in our country very often when they are young they had at least two times a month a week sorry two times a week the one hour lesson is it the same at yeah, your country? It's the same it's the same so it's twice in a week one hour and after mm -hmm. Sixth grade, I think it will be also an ensemble, so some chamber mm -hmm. music. We, we already do the chamber music, but not like it's already in this age. Shaker. Yeah, I think it's really important because mm -hmm. at first they can't listen uh, each other, but when they used to, it's uh, really improves and it's it's a big uh, big step when you can play an ensemble. Absolutely. Really. Yeah. So, Veronique, because you are really very, very, very good harpist, how was your way to to progress until you you were getting to this? Did you did you go to some competitions? Did you what was your your like steps? Tell me or tell us or your your way how your you were going through. Uh, it's uh, maybe kind of traditional. So I entered the school with Larissa Klevtsova and. Uh, I think I started to to do local competition after post grade. Also, I played uh, in a duo with a uh, block flute. With uh, mm -hmm. actually now is he is a wonderful clarinet player, Andrei Bandurin. So mm -hmm. I started to attend competitions, and uh, also we attended uh, the competition in Moscow. This is how I met actually how my teacher Larissa Klitsova met Milda Gazarian. Uh, it was a competition, Nutcracker, I think, in Moscow, mm -hmm. and uh, it was held in a school where Milda was teaching uh, mm -hmm. now also. So, and after we started to attend uh, uh, Moscow festivals, uh, which were organized by Milda Gazarian, so we started to get in touch. And uh, in, in parallel, I did some Ukrainian competition, and also I went to Bulgaria. It was, uh, I think, first travel somewhere abroad mm -hmm. without my mom so it was my teacher larissa and me i think i was 13 or something mm -hmm. and it was in september <laughs> and my mom thought oh it's uh, like great season uh, like the best uh, so they, they give me some shirts and <laughs> really summer clothes and it was rainy and cold and i was like <laughs> So oh, the money I won from on that competition, I <laughs> you had to buy fancy clothes. <laughs> you know, with the metal strings and everything. So my mom was shocked when I <laughs> came oh. back home. <laughs> so uh, yes, after I entered the Milda Gazarian class, I started to do more international competition like Arpista mm -hmm. Ludovico. I think it was the first competition I did with Milda Gazarian in Spain. Mm -hmm. And I did Cité des Arts in Paris, and uh, also I attended a few times Harp Masters Academy, and it's really great. Uh, I was uh, as a participant and after as a celebrity master, and I met maybe more than half my harp friends on that mm -hmm. academy. We are still in touch. It was already 11 years since I first came to the Harp Masters, so mm -hmm. Irina, thank you, a big thank you for this academy. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking for the competition, I also was in Wales two times. And uh, I, one of the brightest impressions was my travel to Singapore. It was wow. really incredible. I did it really recently when I already mm -hmm. wasn't a student. And it was one of the, my best trips. So I was mm -hmm. really, it's, it's so wonderful. It's beautiful city, country. It's different. Really 
it's exotic for us it's very different yeah, and it was hot all the time so i was happy because i'm always cold <laughs> <laughs> it was different than in bulgaria at that moment <laughs> yeah really much different so i think it was a, a line of steps and i started to play with the orchestra also a few times when i was still at school actually my first mm -hmm. experience in the orchestra was uh, swan lake and i was 14 and i have no idea what's going on with all this some really not no idea mm -hmm. and since mm -hmm. that it's already was some cds because i don't imagine how our teachers could you know play in the opera already in the action without mm -hmm. any rehearsal it's i don't know it's impossible for now you at least can have a record so i I don't know how many times I <laughs> listened to the track. So that was my first experience. And I remember really well after I had to play uh, Nutcracker, mm -hmm. also when I was still at school, and there is, there wasn't a uh, cellista player. I don't know why. And the conductor like, told me, can you play on piano? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm harpist, <laughs> so I learn it on the harp. All the stuff, pa pam, the sugar plum. <laughs> it was really crazy. That's wonderful. But it's clear that you are really professional. That you are, you can be adapted to anything what is needed, which is really important, so that you can really jump into the emergency situations. So that's very. Yeah, really I I like these challenges. Uh, so like. Uh, Recently, I played uh, La Boheme, uh, also mm -hmm. without any rehearsal. It was quite scary, but it was it was challenging. I liked it, that. Yeah, the the operas really are not easy when you are not yeah. using because the ballet. It's great. So you just listen, you make the marks, so like fifteen yeah. minutes of sleep, and then oh boy, you start to play some funny <laughs> melody, and you can wake up. <laughs> No, that's really wonderful. And do you remember when you did uh, when you played for the first time as a soloist with the orchestra? Uh, I think it was in Kiev. There was a program for the young musicians, like uh, New Stars or something like that, and I played mm -hmm. Wagenzal Concerto mm -hmm. with Maestro Vladimir Syrienko. He's now a conductor of Kiev and in, of Ukrainian National Orchestra. Mm -hmm. It's also a great collective, and he's a fantastic conductor. So I. Really glad to know him. That's great. And what is your next project? I mean, if it's anything planned already now after the pandemic. Uh, actually, we we had to play on second of June. Uh, the mm -hmm. program was a Gothic double concerto, but it seems uh, it seems it will be cancelled. I don't know. As mm -hmm. for now, actually, we we are starting to get uh, to the orchestra work on first of June. I mm -hmm. don't know. Will it be or not? We still like a big question, but anyway, maybe it will go like live stream. So from tomorrow, I'm focused on <laughs> gossip concert. <laughs> and with whom are you going to play? With your colleague? Yes, with my colleague Maria Poznikova. Mm -hmm. Actually, we, I really wanted to say hi to her and uh, say thanks. She's a great colleague. It's also really maybe not that uh, often that your colleague. It's also your good friend, and you also can count on your help in, in any situation. So it really matters. That's a really big gift as well. So I'm thankful as well because and uh, because I have also such a great colleague, and I know it's not really often and it's rare, but it's uh, fantastic when we have this gift to have this colleague. So. Many greetings to your colleague if she's watching us as well. And of course, it's your way also, because if you are like that, then of course, there is very nice relationship between the two two people. So it's, yeah, it's really important. Also, I'm working now. It's already recorded, but it's now mastering process with my upcoming CD. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's CD of contemporary music, but not you know, scary contemporary music is a nice one. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it could be, of course, modern and everything, but still, it's really beautiful in their way. So it's for harp solo and for harp in duo. And mm -hmm. for the solo, it will be uh, Andres Elegy, uh, La Mort and Banger by Bernard Andres, mm -hmm. uh, Jacques Charpentier, uh, Dance mm -hmm. de Mandorche, and the Spiders. And for the chamber part, there is two. Interrupt you, the, stapper, the Spiders are going to be the solo ones or with the orchestra? Yes, the solo ones. The solo the ones. Mm -hmm. 
but my hope someday I will also record it with the orchestra. We'll see. So, so maybe like spiders yeah. and couple, so this mix of maybe really yeah. and flute concert is really beautiful. So mm -hmm. and so for and for the duo parts, there is uh, with the flute uh, Liberman Sonata. I really love mm -hmm. it. It's mm -hmm. so fantastic music, mm -hmm. and the Pater San Kananik Lullaby. Also with the saxophone, we play Mitchell Davidson, uh, another mm -hmm. lullaby, and. Uh, in a hard duo, we did uh, an arrangement of Philip Glass, Metamorphose Number Two. He doesn't know it yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> but maybe <he's> watching now, <laughs> maybe he will just learn it at the moment. Surprise! Hmm. Wonderful. And you are you are going to record everything in Ukraine, or is it going to be also somewhere else published? It's already recorded, actually, and oh. uh, now I'm. Uh, have an offer of Orpheus classical label and mm -hmm. then need to uh, work out with some details so we'll see so in any way it will be some label so not self because my my previous cd was a self production mm -hmm. with very romantic harp so really traditional way of people thinking about the harp it was mm -hmm. the first one and the second one it will, will be really different wonderful so when is the plan to be released the cd I hope that in the next two months, maybe three, it will be ready. It really depends on the sound engineer, so Shamil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <He's working. laughs> so certainly, Veronica, you have to inform us, and of course the, the Harp channel will post it so and inform about it your new... It will be on, uh, at, in all this online platform like Spotify and iTunes and Google Music, so I, we will put it there. Excellent. That would be great. And maybe, of course, the list of the pieces we will perform on this CD will be also interested to interesting yes. to, to to have. Yeah. So, and please also tell me when uh, is your next project online? Do you have any oh, already yes. plans? <laughs> so, another project online. Actually, I have two in one day. It's really how it can happen. Like we have nothing during the quarantine. And after I have two events in one day, I have uh, this, you know, for for the Museum of History, I play the recitals here in Yekaterinburg quite often. They ask me to make an online recital, so I will tell the Minstrel Voyages uh, story mm -hmm. again, but online. And the second one is with my really good friend from Austria, Elizabeth Planck. Uh, mm -hmm. It's called Muse Aik. And she has a very fun idea uh, with the playing each other first uh, pieces we ever played on the harp. So I will perform her first piece and she will perform mine. And also we found this, all these pictures and I actually found it my first recital, like recital, three, three, three two pieces <laughs> record on video. So it will be a lot of fun, I think. That's wonderful. And when is it going to be? It's going to be on 4th of June at, um, I think at the same time as your stream now, it's a 6 p.m. set time, European time. Okay, and is it going to be on Facebook or uh, in which platform you can, the people can? Uh, I think it's originally on Instagram, but it will be redirected on Facebook also. Okay. Anyway, it will be saved and uh, possible to watch after. That's wonderful. And because you are teaching as well, are you teaching even your little students online during this pandemic? Yes, yes because I'm lucky that all my students have uh, the harp at home. Great. Uh, someone have Celtic and someone have already pedals. And this is great because otherwise I know that a lot of harpists without harps, it's mm -hmm. really not good for one, two, even three months <clears throat> to not play. Of course. So yes, we, but actually they not really in some in some new situation because when I'm on an orchestra tour, mm. I, I'm teaching them online or asking them to send me the records. So they mm. kind of used <laughs> to do that. So they were used to already before to have the yeah. line the online mm -hmm. lesson. That's very good because I know that with the smaller children, it is not so easy, especially when they are starting. It's really important to have the contact, personal contact. And yeah, so I'm trying to treat them like a small adults, so not like little kids uh, which don't understand it and actually they are really smart and mm -hmm. you just need to support them and sometimes to push it but not much <laughs> that's very clever indeed yeah so which school are you using for for the very beginners do you have any 
<laughs> that's very cool. That's perfect top. <laughs> do you have any any like music Russian music? Do you use for the etudes or for the studies or do do you... um, at first actually uh, we use um, a lot of uh, exercise at first and I compose a really really simple piece for the first few lessons because mm -hmm. uh, based on what they can do for now well, if, if, if they learn something like that's all they can uh, we do some piece based on that so it's not like great piece but for them it's like oh I'm playing a piece not mm -hmm. a, an exercise so they're really much mm -hmm. more excited about that and uh, a little bit after actually I, I really like um, this is uh, Marcel Granjani and uh, Linda Wood, uh, mm -hmm. uh, a little set of pieces, and I use a lot of Bernard André because mm -hmm. it's really great for the hand position. Mm -hmm. It's really right, so it's nice. It's it's nice music and everything, but the first uh, first of all, it's really good for the hand. So they they are learning how how to put. How how to do the fingering? How to play all the chords and everything with the right uh, attitude? So it's I really appreciate these uh, little pieces, brilliant for the Celtic part especially because I don't rush with the pedal mm -hmm. pieces uh, while they're like maybe it depends of course of how high I well, say. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. But if the kid is small, they can play like three four years a lot of repertoire without pedals. Mm -hmm quite mm -hmm. tricky already mm -hmm. so i don't really insist on pedals really it's it's a lot it's a lot to do with the hands and what what kind of harp do you use which kind of harp of course you said the celtic harp but what kind of uh, label i mean kamak or do you use line and healy or uh, we have actually all set <laughs> all uh, we have, we, we have uh, kamak and we also have a resonance harp it's from st mm -hmm. petersburg new factory Indeed, yeah, they are very good for the students, certainly, for because they are not so huge. They are smaller, and it's maybe for yeah, the it's much cheaper, so it's not mm -hmm. the biggest shock for the parents. Mm -hmm. So they have mm -hmm. few years to prepare <laughs> the better one. And, and for, the, for, for the practice, for the practicing, it's they are really good for practicing. So it's yeah. really nice. And if we have a concert somewhere, like in a museum or anywhere, it's much easier to transport the Celtic harp, so it's no need Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Yeah. Sorry, Bonya. <laughs> it's awake. <laughs> she was quiet for a long time, so now it's. <laughs> Veronique, and uh, now, do you plan any holidays? Because we have summer in front of us, <laughs> so if there's any any holiday, <laughs> like. I hope I hope I will I will have an opportunity to go out somewhere because it's still very strict with the border. Mm. Uh, I don't know how it will be open or not. Of course, I would like to go somewhere. There is a really interesting. It, at first, I wanted to go to the Croatia. There is a great master class which uh, Tayana uh, Pig and organized, and she invites Chantal for the second time already. And actually. There, you were asking me how I teach my little one students. Chantal is really great. She, plus, I, I plus two things I knew from the Milda Kazaran and Larissa Klepsova. Chantal also uh, showed a lot of uh, small things, uh, really useful for the kids. So mm -hmm. I also use that. So at first, I wanted to go there because it's beautiful. It's like in Croatia, in the and in the sea side it's really beautiful so you can rest and you can play so mm -hmm. like perfect combination but i think it was cancelled and mm -hmm. another one will be in august uh, uh, it organized by mania smit and uh, i forgot um misumi the japanese mm -hmm. harp is also based in Netherlands. Mm -hmm. we'll see i hope we can attend something so here can I you see, you see you're asking me about the holidays and I just found it a nice place to play the harp. <laughs> but the, we have now the situation that we were like really all we were locked and now they are starting to to open and the concert starts in our country but we are still not allowed to go out of the country so that's the situation is like that that we are locked but at least we start 
to somehow live again, which is to be at yes. least. I saw in Kotzer Gebau that uh, posted a lot of pictures with it, uh, one and a half meters distance between everyone. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Yeah. Is it it's the same in the orchestra, or you don't work yet? No, we don't because we are we are test for the COVID. We have to go through the test, so we are mm -hmm. we have to like be proved that we are not uh, positive. So that's that's then why, why we can normally sit next to each other, but we have to be still taking all the. Uh, I think uh, for us it will be the same because our stage is not that huge to indeed. Have that distance. Yeah. Indeed. We don't have the stage so big, yeah, indeed. And for the autumn, do you have any plans? Hopefully that in the autumn we will have already open everything so that you can normally normally pr present uh, your performances. Yes, of course I have plans. It all it's all very, very much depends of uh, what I have in my orchestra job and mm -hmm. Because of all this thing we have now, I think our schedule will be really different because I think we, we will need to move some programs we didn't play maybe to September or somewhere. So I'm not sure yet. Maybe also this festival La Folle Journée, mm -hmm. based uh, originally in France. It's a, it's like a, actually a World Cup Congress, but for the all types of instruments and orchestra mm -hmm. and chamber music and so on. So it, it's pretty much the same, but it goes three days in uh, different halls and all types mm -hmm. of music. And uh, we had to, it, it has to be in July, but it was canceled. So maybe it, was, it will be postponed to the <clears throat> autumn. And I mm -hmm. I was uh, asked to play also a solo recital. So maybe uh, that is what I will do on autumn. <laughs> we'll see. And, and Tell me, what, what pieces do you like the best to play? What are your favorite music? Oh, uh, you know, in, in each music, it's something I, oh, I actually I like Baroque and classical a lot, but uh, I always a bit afraid to play it because you can hear everything. So like in romantic uh, music, you also can like do a bit related to note and everything. So feel more free. Mm -hmm. Oh, in contemporary music, you can make a few mistakes and maybe no one even will notice it. <laughs> <laughs> it's more about spirit, but I, I try to combine my 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 program because it's it's mm -hmm. great to play in, in one style, but it's really boring to play in one style for one hour or something. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I also am a big fan of chamber music. I really love it. So I try to do it like as much as possible, maybe half of my performances is also mm -hmm. chamber music in various uh, variations. So with flute, with violin, with mm -hmm. any trio. So I'm really, I, I feel really comfortable playing chamber music. Mm -hmm. like, and so is there any, any connection? I mean, any combination of the instrument which is so unique that you played only once and you have never saw that you will play with some instrument like that? Hmm. Well, I played with the trombone. It was quite unusual. <laughs> That's very unusual. What kind of tune was it? It must have been some and either contemporary or either some transcription. Yeah, actually, it was transcription of uh, Pavane by oh, Ravel. Okay. So okay. it was. Mm -hmm. I think it was different uh, key. Uh, I need to play on, but so maybe that one. Also, I played with percussions, but it's mm -hmm. not that unusual. It's now mm -hmm. a lot of uh, actually harpist playing with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On other, it was quite traditional, like flute, my favorite, and cello, mm -hmm. really. And, and do you have any funny stories from your from your career as a soloist, or um, even or from the orchestra, yeah. or anything? Okay, let me think. Um, uh, okay, one of the chamber concerts, <laughs> we played mm -hmm. with the violin and flute. We played this tournier. Oh, no, Iber. He mm -hmm. has a great trio in, mm -hmm. in two movements, mm -hmm. and we we used to start all together. And I don't know why. <laughs> I looked to the violinist, and we start to play. And after I watched the video, it flutist was like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> Did not start it all. <laughs> he was disappointed. <laughs> It can happen. <laughs> and, uh, and I remember when I played the Salcedo variations, uh, I was, uh, it was some kind of recitals when you play your program for the upcoming competition. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and I played the Sarsede variations and one of the top strings was broken. Yeah. And I decided, okay, I will try. <laughs> so I played half of variations octave lower or something like that, but I did it to the end and was really <laughs> happy about it. It was a competition, so it was fine. It was just a recital. But it's a big compliment because, of course, if you have to jump from one octave to another one, it's not easy. You have to only think very... Yeah, so, like, uh, you can check how 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 good you know it is. And one more, I remember <laughs> also Mr. Seda. So there is a popular joke for the harpist. If you <clears throat> forget what to play next, so you play glissando, glissando, dominante, and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I had a concert when uh, in one operation I completely forget the left hand. <laughs> and my friend, she's a singer. She was in the audience and she told me after, hmm, <laughs> it was really familiar combination you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we don't have an easy life, right? <laughs> so, yeah, it's fine. If you can, well, of course, if it happens on the competition, it's uh, not not really fun. <clears throat> but otherwise, it's it's okay. <laughs> it can happen. We are human being, of course, and yeah. that's absolutely absolutely human. So that yeah, I saw I recently a really good post of Sivan Magen. He posted his uh, performance of uh, Spanish dance by Defada, and he wrote, "Yes, yeah, there is some uh, wrong notes, but it's the spirit, and I'm a." Uh, Human. <laughs> I mean, in the, in the past, when the people were really the from the I don't know in the middle of 20th century, when there were no cuts in the recordings, it was absolutely going through. And of course, you also they cannot play absolutely perfect through when when it's like life. So so and the spirit of the performance is most important and more important than anything else. So the perfections is not always the the final result which is which can make it perfect it's actually yeah, it, can, it can make it can work on competition maybe but in a real life like Marielle Norman she didn't won as I know any competition but she's one of the greatest harpists I know so <clears throat> well, in competition it's important to motivate yourself and to mm -hmm. get yourself in a shape and prepare all the big program it's really good but after mm -hmm. you also need to make a difference playing the recital it's absolutely true and certainly in these days when actually you can the people have so many opportunities to promote themselves differently in the past it was not possible so it was really the only chance to to make the competition to be getting known because you you got some prizes but now the people can do whatever and they can get really known even without the prizes so it's really better for the young generation at this moment of course yeah so and i'm trying to teach my students so if you made them of course they need to know the piece and like in, in two weeks before the concert they need to play it well and everything but if there's something on the concert just don't show it and rule number one don't stop <laughs> this, this. Absolutely. absolutely that's the main thing so that you are professional on the stage indeed <laughs> Yeah. Veronica, it was really wonderful what all you have been sharing. Is there anything what would you like to say and I've forgotten to ask about? Uh, okay, wait. <laughs> I think we discussed actually a lot. Maybe I, I need to also say say thanks to the harpist. I <clears throat> took the master classes with Isabel Moretti, Isabel Peran and Skyla and Chantal. So and it's, it was a few more, but with those harpists, I took few lessons and it's really important, especially to learn French music with the French harpists. It's really great. Absolutely. You are playing, so I can see you have the Kamak harp now. You are playing yes, on. I have. So actually, this one is the Orchestra harp and old one, and mm -hmm. I like to have it at home. And I have uh, also Atlantide, but black one in uh, Ukraine. Okay. So and now, and now, you are, now you are in Ukraine as well, or you are not in Ukraine? No, now I'm like uh, in working process or non-working, like Schrodinger situation now. <laughs> so I must sit in Yekaterinburg and wait what's going on next. Of course, I would like to go home and spend some time with my family, but with all mm -hmm. this uh, two weeks quarantine rules and mm -hmm. everything, it's mm -hmm. uh, risky and impossible. impossible. It's really risky if I will travel maybe if I'm health I can 
met people who is uh, infected and it's not a good idea to bring it home. So of I decided course. to do it. But the traveling, yeah. the traveling is probably not possible either, so that you cannot even travel. Yeah. Anyway, anyway it's, well, I can go because it's my motherland. I can go, but I don't think I can go out after. So. I see, I see, I see. Okay. So, Veronique, if there is nothing more what we want to discuss because it's really you have so rich life even in your youth age so if there is anything of course you are very welcome to write down on the comments and to to, to add whatever you want to is still add and you can of course say any of your uh, your links to your pages or anything be welcome to to share it with the people because we had many people watching us today and i'm sure there is also many of the comments which you can uh, read afterwards and i'm really very happy that we had you as a guest today at yeah, our and thank you yana so much it's uh, incredible work you did with uh, all this uh, online harp congress i can imagine it's so much to find all these records to to make it digital to put it online to name it it's and you post it like few times in a day plus all these interviews it's really i am amazed so thank you very much for doing this thank you so much and i really thank you that you are promoting the harp the way how we all wish that the harp is promoting and that you are a great ambassador of your country and of the instrument. And I'm really very pleased that we could have invited you and welcome you at this channel series, the harp concerts live interview. And I really hope that everybody enjoyed it. And we have wonderful concert, we have wonderful speak, and we had a wonderful time. And I thank you very much, Veronique, and wish you all my best to everybody as well. And of course, we will not finish with the talk, but we will finish with the music. And I wish everybody a wonderful evening. And I'm looking forward to see all of you on Thursday, when we will have a wonderful, again, young harpist, male harpist, Victor Hartubanu from Bel... Ber I mean, yes, actually, Victor and also Rosita, you have next, they both uh, were participate in the glowing heart marathon so i really thankful and big hello and good luck in the <laughs> upcoming so interviews i'm very looking forward to meet all of them of course because i have seen some of the videos as i am of course always uh, putting one day uh, i mean the whole one week before the uh, the concert so you can always meet the people already at seven videos before they have live concert and uh, i'm really looking forward to meet them but Today, I'm so happy that we had wonderful artist Veronika Lemyshenko today with us. And we will hear the last piece, which will be, of course, titled. But uh, Veronika will still uh, introduce what she's going to perform. And thank you, Veronika, for everything, you. for you. your sharing and your time. Thank you. For the last one, I would like to play also Tchaikovsky Cadenza, but from Sleeping Beauty. It's uh, quite rarely performed. I think it, it's really beautiful. So here it is. very very much thank you veronica all my best wishes to you hope to see you soon good luck for everything and i'm looking forward to see everybody online on thursday again have a great evening and thank you very much very much take care bye bye bye